Hello and welcome to Lakeshore Academy. My name is Tina and today I'm going to be talking to you about should I homeschool? That is a really, really big question. A lot of people ask that question a lot and recently homeschooling is becoming very, very popular um, <clears throat> because people are just don't have as many options that they would like in the public school system. Not saying that the public school system, because I'm not anti-public school system because I am a product of going to public school system. I'm not against public schools in any way. However, in different areas, um, it's just not working. And every child is not made to go to public school. You just have different types of people. And so um, basically, the question is, but one thing I want to warn people about basically is just don't start homeschooling or decide on a whim that you're going to homeschool because you don't like something that happened in the public school system and you think that you can do it better or you're mad at something and you're saying, oh, I'm just going to homeschool my kids. It'll be easy. I can do it. You, that would be a no-no. The reason why I say this is because homeschool is not just schooling. It's a whole lifestyle change. When you homeschool, it's something, whether you decide to do it at home through the public school system homeschool or you decide to take the full responsibility and homeschool your child yourself and pick out the curriculum and everything and so forth. Um... It's really a big decision. So whatever decision process that you have to go through in order to make decisions, um, I encourage you to really think it through. Write down the pros and cons for your family, not someone else's family. The pros and cons for your family, what you're trying to get out of homeschooling, what's your goal for homeschooling, what's your objective, what are you trying to accomplish um, for homeschooling your child or children. Just don't do it because you're angry and you don't have a plan. You have to have a plan. I don't know how many times I can say that. Please make sure that you have an active plan and do not go out and just pull your child out of school without doing the proper requirements first because that's how a lot of people get into trouble with the law with homeschooling, the problem with um, delinquency, because usually every school district have a rule about how many days a child can miss during a particular school year. And if you get upset and you say, well, I'm taking my child out of school, and you pull them out and you don't let them know that you do, then you fall up under that delinquency thing and you can become a neglectful parent without you even knowing what's going on. Because every state has different rules and regulations that you have to abide by in order to be legally homeschooling your child. So you need to first make sure that you do the research on what your state requires for you to homeschool your child or children. What are the steps that you have to go through? And make sure you do that and make sure that you keep records of it. I want to say that again. Keep your records. So that if anything happens, you will have records that you are legal to homeschool your child or children. And also, you want to make sure that you find a good homeschool association in order to join to uh, help keep you alert to the different laws and stuff. Because every time, not every time, but sometimes laws change and your homeschool association can alert you and let you know. Uh, um, make you aware of those laws. You want to make sure that um, before you pull your child out, you want to make sure that you have a clear-cut idea, a plan, your goals on what you want to do and what type of homeschool you want to have. Because there are many different types of homeschool methods out there. I'm not too sure whether or not you all are aware of this, but there are different homeschool methods. And when I say methods, I mean different ways that you can consider, still be considered a homeschooler and follow up under that homeschooler category, but it's done a different way. Like, for example, there are homeschoolers that homeschool their children, and they're considered homeschoolers, 
but they go through their particular school district and they just have their child at home and they homeschool their children but they um do whatever the state their particular state tells them to do because it's organized k-12 public school homeschool if that make any sense it's public school but they're doing it at home and their particular state provides all the books the resources and stuff for that particular child or children in your home you're just doing everything at home and you have to follow their rules their requirements um you your children will have their own teachers and stuff like that for the various subjects and but they just do everything at home the same thing that they would do in the public school system they're just doing the exact same thing but they're doing it from the home on a computer now that is considered homeschooling it's just public school homeschooling and you are just there as a guide to help your children make sure they get online and they do their work um they have any questions with the teacher they they consult the teacher or whatever like that basically it's pretty much homeschooling but hands off hands off approach because the public school is pretty much taking care of everything. Um, and that can be a little tedious and stressful in a way if you don't get everything in on time and do all the paperwork that they tell you to do on a particular time because basically you, your child is still in public school. They're just at home doing it. Now, it's the type of homeschool that I am doing. It is the third option of homeschooling, which is basically... I am the teacher, I pick my own curriculum, I pay for my own curriculum and for my children, and I can either choose to go out and hire somebody to teach my children, or I can go out and pick different classes my child can do online that are whatever I choose, as long as I hear all those core subjects, which, which are reading, math, science, social studies, history, language, arts. And then when you get up to the upper grades, you know, you have to have electives and stuff of that nature. But I have control over um, lesson plans, books, what type of curriculum, whether I want to do Christian curriculum or on the core subjects or um, a Christian-based curriculum or whether I want to do secular uh, homeschool curriculum that's not religious-based. I have the control over what type of curriculum that I want my children to use I can pick and choose what classes I want to pay for but I pay for everything um that's the kind that I do which is more flexible for me because I can pick my own schedule I can um, pick what type of books and everything that I want my children to use I can omit different things out of the book uh that maybe i'm using this like for example i'm using a science book it's a secular science book and then it starts talking about the subject of evolution well if you're from a christian standpoint you don't really want to do that part on evolution so you omit that part and go to the next chapter i have the authority to omit or put in whatever I want to put in that particular subject. So I particularly like that. Now for some people that is a little, how can I say it, overwhelming and scary to think that all of that is on them. However, I have um, an educational background, so it's not that overwhelming for me. However, if you still want to do the third option and have control over what curriculum that your child uses, but you just don't, know how to plan your curriculum on your lesson plans and stuff of that nature well then you can go out and buy a box curriculum a box curriculum is a curriculum that you buy from a company whether it's christian based or secular based which means non-religious and they have everything from a to z <clears throat> excuse me all the subjects they have everything from A to Z, what you have to do, what day, and everything like that. You have your 180 days that you have to complete each year in order to be legal to homeschool um, to fit your requirements for the year. So they take their time, and they do all that, and you buy it, and then you just teach what's ever in the box. You just guide them through and help them. You can do that, or you can look through like I do. I make up my own curriculum, and I also use other outside resources to support my curriculum. I use different online classes that's free. Um, some of them you have to pay for, but I 
I'm a person that spend try to spend very little money on curriculum. I try to be very thrifty when it comes down to stuff of that nature because like I said it can get become very pricey. Um and so thus far I have been very successful in finding um free or almost free or very reasonably priced um curriculum. So um that's why I share it with you on my YouTube page because you don't have to spend all that money like that not unless that's particularly what you like if you like the ease of having somebody else build a curriculum for you then buying the box curriculum will be the best option for you if you really can't wrap your mind around building your own curriculum and stuff of that nature so that would be a good option for a person who just don't know how to do it or just afraid of messing up or you know how we overthink things so a box curriculum probably would be good or you can just get a workbook that has all the subjects in it, subjects in it, because now they have a lot of workbooks that have all the subjects in it. The only thing you have to do is build on that. So it's it's super duper easy to do your own curriculum, and you can pick and choose what time you want to do your curriculum. Um, that's why I love option three. We can we home we can homeschool when um during the hours that we want to homeschool as long as we get our hours for that particular day and get our 180 days for the year it's just so awesome and cool and and most of the time we do way over our requirements because the children really learn love to learn and it's not such a stressful environment and we do a lot of outside activities and museums and field trips and they do a lot of online classes where they can actually um, talk to different professors and teachers. So I just love the versatility of option three because the creativity and the things that you can do is just so endless. And I'm not, we're not put in a box, so to speak. So I really love option three where I have the freedom we have more flexibility and freedom but option one may be the best thing for some of you who um uh works um a full-time job and they don't know how you your individual just can't wrap your mind around how to do all of that homeschooling plus work and everything like that um outside the home um there are a lot of of, of us homeschool moms that work um inside the home uh, work from home so that helps us out a lot as well working from home but you still can homeschool even if you work outside the house you just have to prioritize and make a very very good schedule so i hope this question of should i homeschool or why am i homeschooling or why do i want to homeschool i really hope this video really helps you to really think about why are you homeschooling? Are you doing it because it's something popular right now? Or are you doing it because what are your reasons? Because ultimately, those are the reasons that's going to keep pushing you through on those hard times or the hard days um, with homeschooling. So you don't just want to do it on a whim. You want to really weigh out all your options. And it's really a truly awesome thing to do to homeschool if you're able to do it. I would encourage anybody, don't let the fear of thinking, oh, I can't do it. You can do anything that you put your mind to. If that is something or goal that you want for your family, you can make it happen. You just have to figure out how you're going to make it happen and make sure you do your homework, so to speak, first. Just don't jump into it without doing um, the research for your particular state um find out the requirements that you have to do in order to pull your children out of school to make sure that you're legal so it won't be any repercussions from pulling your school your child out of school without the proper paperwork um and make sure you know what type of homeschool you want to do whether you want to do public homeschool at home or you want to be in traditional where you do all the things yourself and you pick and choose the curriculum what you want your child to use whether you want to be Christian or non-religious, um, whatever you want to do. So just think the thing, just think it through first. That's the best advice that I can give you. Just think it through first, weigh the pros and cons, and make sure that you write out 
what your goal is and for you and your family not someone else's goal not what you see somebody else have on youtube what their family is doing no your family your individual goals as an individual and your goals collectively as a family your family not someone else's family because we, we can get bombarded and start saying well i see what they're doing and i see what they're doing and i like what they're doing mm -mm your family and what your family goals are and then once you do that and you start implementing it it will be a breeze i'm sure it's going to be a little bumps in the road but you'll be able to get your footing back and you'll be able to get everything done and then you have ones like me and different other homeschool moms and different ones that can help you along the way when you find a little maybe get into a little bump or bump in the road so again, this is Tina from Lakeshore Academy. I'm so glad that you decided to watch my video and please subscribe to my channel. And very soon I will be doing some giveaways. So please stay tuned for that. Again, this is Tina. Bye.